Hi, welcome to my show. I've decided to call it the official podcast. Ooh, and joining, joining me this week, please don't interrupt the host. Joining Sorry, me this week are my three lovely guests. The Thunder from Down Underwear, Jackson. The big man with the big plan, Charlie. And the slippery boy with his slippery toys, Kaya. Please introduce Hello. yourselves and talk about whatever topic you brought. Oh, let's just drop the pretense and let's get right into you guys hating Pokemon. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's in a rough state. <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, I think this might be like the first Pokemon game I just don't buy or play because it, oh, man. You said that for the last two or three games now. No, 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 no. No, you no, bought them. no? I, I made a pledge during Sword and Shield. I bought that one, I tried it out, it was fucking horrendous, and I said if they don't fix this, if they don't do a good job on the next one, I'm not buying it. And uh, they didn't. So I didn't buy Arceus, I'm not buying this. Well, at least Sword and Shield fucking worked. Kind of. It was just yeah, like, it was functional. pretty boring in terms exactly. of game design. Yeah, but this time, it's like a whole new mess. Sword and Shield was basic, and it was bland, and it felt like like game design from like six seven years ago but it worked it functioned this is just embarrassing every time i open any social media like twitter or if i check reddit on an off day or whatever it's just nothing but posts of people going here's a new glitch i found here's a new glitch i found look at how <laughs> this doesn't work oh this is clearly not finished it's it's really embarrassing like good lord yeah, I don't think I've seen the game run it over like 15 frames a second at all. It, and it I doesn't keep run seeing, over 15. <laughs> I keep seeing the like brain dead take that, oh, this is because the Switch is like eight years old at this point. No, no. no. It's because Game Damn, Freak fucking really? sucks. Yeah, well, it's, it is eight years the old. Metric, is, the metric for this, the metric for this will always be Breath of the Wild. Breath yeah. of the Wild was a fully fledged open world action adventure game that ran pretty much flawlessly. I think there was maybe some slowdown on really intense Not moments. Bad at this. No, and and it's all it was basically a launch title for the Switch. So with all that time to work with the hardware and optimize it and figure it out, you can't make a functional open world action adventure title. That's no excuse at all. It was already proven that it could be done. Even like Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I didn't really play much of it, but it is f a far better looking game and more technically impressive than um, what Game Freak is cooking up in their labs. Mm -hmm. And it runs better. So there yeah. is no excuse. Th this is a developer with what I would imagine is unlimited funds at this point since they have just constantly put out yearly games, which like are bestsellers. Well, so they must I'll, have say highest, I'll say it again, highest Jackson. Highest grossing yeah. franchise of yeah, all it makes time. No yeah, fucking highest sense. grossing franchise of all time by a factor <laughs> by a factor of I think at least ten billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's no excuse for it at all whatsoever. Well, you clearly don't read Twitter because there's plenty of excuses for it. Mm hmm. Someone someone put it like perfectly. The uh, I forgot where I read it, but the idea is. Everyone says Game Freak's taking a step in the right direction. Game Freak's moving mm -hmm. in the right direction yeah. with trying stuff. But their response was Game Freak has walked a marathon in the right direction and still hasn't crossed the finish line. And I think yeah. that's a perfect, <laughs> accurate summary of all of it. What, 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 does, that, what does that mean? Walking so the, the idea is, is Nintendo fans and Pokemon fans always want to say, oh, at least Game Freak tried something different on this one. Oh, you know, with Arceus, they swapped up the catching system and oh, they did this and added this, but they never make a good game. Yeah, they add different mechanics or try things, but they never work or are never fun or are never like actual innovations in technology. It's shit they should have added like five years ago. So stop giving them excuses and just admit the game sucks and it's not good or, you it's, know, exciting. The games are still so basic. I cannot believe it is 2022 and the Pokemon games still do not have voice acting. <laughs> How the fuck does it not have voice acting? Well, I love Jackson. They <laughs> can't even animate. They can't even yeah. animate people eating. 
When you play Yakuza 7, oh, yeah. a game that yeah, came yeah, out yeah. in 2019, there's a scene where the main character is in prison and they give him a loaf of bread. And that scene where he eats the bread is so beautifully animated, it became a YouTube meme. The clip of that fucking scene, which is like 10, 15 seconds, has a million views on YouTube because they cared and tried and made it look interesting. Meanwhile, in Pokemon, <laughs> when you eat a sandwich, you see stand in the middle of nowhere chomping the air as your Pokemon stand around you doing the same thing in different sporadic directions. <laughs> yeah. It's insane. Your, your guy just like kind of head bobs a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I just burst out laughing because I saw this headline published today. Um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet sales have unexpectedly surpassed Ragnarok. <laughs> I fucking... Oh, oh my god. Oh, god. <laughs> Damn it. I hate and this, this is gonna happen again. <laughs> We're gonna have the same conversation next year. Son of a bitch. That's so fucking <laughs> awesome. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I didn't why? care for Ragnarok, but they I admitted have... it was a good game and it looked like, I don't know why you, you know, guys think bad, anything but... is uh. going to change or get better. They have zero incentive yeah, to change they don't anything. Have incentive. Because people they're will failing keep... upwards constantly. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like the government, yeah, they're just constantly failing up, upwards. And every uh, example of failure is just another reason why they need more money and why they can fuck you over again and you will pay them. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's also fucked, what's That's also awesome. fucked is they have spin-offs that are successful. Like the fucking Pokemon Unite, that was a fine game. They had a mobile game come out recently that everyone says is pretty good. Like, you can make a good Pokemon game. It's not hard. Why do the fucking B teams and the third party studios make better games than the main developer? It's insane. Not only that, fucking fans make better Pokemon games than the Pokemon yeah. devs. Like, you can find better, rom like, fan-made ROMs. Yes! It's insane. 100%. That. Yeah, it, <sighs> it should not be beating God of War. No matter what you say, no matter your feelings for Pokemon, uh, like, it's very clear that at least, like, five years work worth of time and effort went into God of War Ragnarok from, like, hundreds <laughs> of people, whereas I, can't, I, I, I don't think they worked on this game for more than six months with, like, a team of 12. Interns. Well, Ar I didn't realize this. Arceus came out this year. It's yeah. been ten months oh, since the last no. Pokemon yeah. game. That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. But but here's the thing. It, it is crazy. But for Pokemon, the biggest pr franchise on the planet, and also under the umbrella of Nintendo, you would think they could get enough staff, enough talented people to do really successful like releases multiple times. I don't see it. F I don't see a reality being too crazy where Pokemon has multiple games released a year and they're good because they have all the resources at their disposal to make that happen. They just don't. Yeah, they do it with Mario games, not Game Freak, but Nintendo in general. You know, they release like seven fucking Mario games every single year, so that's possible. Yeah. But Clearly, there's been some uh, budgetary mismanagement, or maybe they're really, <laughs> they just don't care, maybe. They, 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 they don't they have just a reason care. to care. They yeah. Don't care. yeah, they just don't there's care. No, like you said, there's no incentive. I remember when I was, like, playing through Emerald originally, when I was, like, a kid, I was, like, so excited for a world where these games were explored more and, like, expanded upon, like, a Grand Theft Auto Pokemon game or something, like, <laughs> extravagant with, like, a massive no, budget. No, no. I couldn't fucking wait. I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to see what Pokemon games are like in 10 years. <laughs> 10 years yep. passes and it's somehow worse. I can't believe it. <sighs> it's it just is, frustrating. Um, it's sad. Apparently... They're holding us back from an awesome world where Pokemon games are good. Apparently it was the second biggest second biggest launch of a Pokemon game after Sun and Moon. Why? And it sold 25% more copies in the first week than Pokemon Sword and Shield did. What? <laughs> Who? Who is buying this? Why? Everybody. Oh, it also literally, sold literally everybody. No. It also sold fifty six percent more than Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, <laughs> and that was not the only one that tried to do something different. Jesus uh, Christ! Yeah. <laughs> They're actually making more and more money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I didn't even consider. I didn't even consider. Maybe the reason that the number is so large is all the people that actually buy both copies of the games, like the the Uber fans. Because you could take the audience mm -hmm. and then 
uh, multiply it by two at that point. Yeah, they, so. they do sell bundles that have like a five dollars off or some shit. Like it's not a good discount, but you well, do get a discount. It's not shocking. Like all of these kids' properties are always going to do super well, and Pokemon mm -hmm. fans are always going to buy. And right now, like we've talked about it a lot, the culture online is: if you like something, you have to be the biggest fan of it ever and yeah. support it to the end of time. Yeah. So I'm not. I am literally not shocked at all to hear that it's beating God of War Ragnarok and is the second biggest launch of a Pokemon game. It would hurt me a lot less if the game functioned. Like with Sword and Shield, <laughs> with Sword and Shield, it was it was in a matter of opinion. I thought it was boring and bland, and I thought it was just you know not good. But people yeah. people were like, "Oh, I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, you know, I get it, but I'm still enjoying it." And I I understood. I didn't like the game, and I wish they oh did better. God. But I got it. But with this one, it's so clearly an unfinished product. Listen to this. Listen to this line at the end of this article on. Tech Genis, I guess. Um, it should be noted that Nintendo exclusively reports only boxed sales data, and it still overtook Ragnarok. Jesus that Christ, that is insane. <laughs> so it's physical copies, so it doesn't account for digital. Oh, I, don't, I don't know yes. if many people I buy digital Switch games, though, right? I oh, do. Yeah. I don't buy box copies. I do. Everyone buys oh, more okay. digital. I think digital sales now overtake box sales, Jackson, and have for a bit. Well, no, in general, yeah, but I didn't know if it was the same on the Switch, because the Switch, like, eStore or whatever is so fucking god-awful. I don't even know if most Switch users know it exists. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. But it sounds like you all do, so maybe. Yeah, I I do. You know you know what the only physical uh, Switch game I own is? Literally the only one? Charlie, it's your copy of Mario Kart that you gave me. Is it really? That's yeah. so cute. That's Aww. the only one. That is cute. So I'm going to need you to give me a digital copy so I can get rid of it. Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll gift it to you. So what Thanks, are man. some of the excuses people defend this with? Are there are any they, yeah, the, the, interesting the, the, ones? The, no, not interesting at all, just brain dead. The most common one is it doesn't need things like voice acting, it's perfect the way it is, and that yeah. the performance issues and like the frame rate and stuff doesn't actually matter to real fans because it doesn't intrude on their gameplay or their enjoyment. Oh my god. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Those are the main takeaways. Well, you know what? You know what's incredibly sad about that too. So kids are probably not the ones really making that argument. It's probably people our age who grew up with Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that Why sad? would we be listening? To, why would we be listening to kids argue? <laughs> well, I want well, them to defend that. I, yeah, I want them to defend themselves, Jackson. Yeah, I don't if care Twitter, Jackson, if you're on Twitter, you're listening to kids argue by default. Like that's you can't stop that. But you just said that no. they're our age. Make up your yeah, mind. Yeah, that's a cop out. I think they are our no, age. Yeah, the pe no, the people really getting vocal and like, okay, so my my point is, kids are not getting in depth arguments. The kids are the ones who are going like, oh, you know, new Pokemon. What? A oh, fucking cool. Yeah, great. Because they're young kids. They're like seven years old. Like they're not. Yeah, even I don't on think Twitter. I would have known a broken game when I was seven years old. I wouldn't have fucking cared when I was seven years old if Pokemon came out with like twenty that's what frames I keep per telling second. You guys, it, it, that's my point. Like, they don't care. Because, that's my point. They don't care. Weird. But the adults care. They're the ones making the arguments like, oh, if you were a real Pokemon fan, I've been playing Pokemon Red since it came out and I was like six. So I know what a real Pokemon game is. That's the people who are doing this. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> which means they're our age and they're making these arguments, which is really sad. I hope it continues. I think this is funny. I hope it degrades to the point where they just sell Pong with <laughs> bugs. So where the paddles can't even connect to the fucking ball moving on screen. And they still outsell everyone. And I hope they win the Game of the Year awards too. That would be awesome. Why why does so why does Pokemon get away with this, but then Halo, which released in the same condition, not get away with it? Uh, different audience ages, I think, mm -hmm. is the thing. Target and, audience. Like, not, like, it's like not we just, just said. Audience though. ages. It's also Pokemon is a global phenomenon. Yeah. Like I'm sure many people in parts That's of the fair. world don't even know what the fuck Halo is. They don't care. Yeah. There's um, also Pokemon yeah. is so universal. Pokemon so Pokemon has all of those points as well as the fact there's no true competition for it. Name another monster catching game out right now. Uh Digimon. Temtem. Temtem. See, Digimon's kinda dead. Temtem is completely dead. They apparently fucked it recently with microtransactions and shit no one wanted. Like, there, there, there's no real competitor to Pokemon. Halo has Call of Duty, 
uh, Battlefield, fucking, and now all the Battle Royales, Apex, etc. There's all sorts of shooters with progression ladders that compete with it. But Pokemon, yeah, it has competitors, but they don't stand up nearly to it. Like, not even close, you know? Well, you can't. It's Pokemon. Exactly. Like, you just literally can't. And that's why people forgive it, because if it's so monolithic and so ingrained and so this and that, you would feel bad going, well, wait, this sucks? I can't say that. It's Pokemon. I, it can't suck. It's got to be like, not only there's got to be some fun I'm not seeing. If you criticize Pokemon in Japan, I heard the Yakuza comes to take your thumbs. <laughs> that might also Pokemon explain Yakuza. part of this. <laughs> yeah, if they take their thumbs, how will they play Pokemon? That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Why? So, uh, all right. So we've determined that the game's bad, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and we determined uh, after you know twenty years of game development history that Game Freak is clueless and doesn't know what they're doing, and, and they're just awful game developers. Probably the worst game developers in the industry. Um, but so why don't don't they don't you think that they would make more money if the games were actually really good? No, nope. like, surely why, that's how? a conversation. Well, like, no. it could, like, reach a whole Not new really. audience of people that actually want to play good games. Nope. I think no matter, it doesn't matter if they made a better game or not, it's going to sell exactly the same, and I'm yeah, sure they exactly know that. Exactly the same. There's, there's, yep, some videos, there's some videos that kind of break down the idea of even if the game is good, it doesn't matter because the brand is so strong that why waste that dev time on a... Or why waste the dev time and the dev money when you can just make the same thing and make profit? Oh, know. I know they're making bank. So yeah, yeah I, I know they're absolutely successful, but I'm saying that they could be even more successful potentially if the games were good. I, I think that's like, a I would have like bought saying... this. I would have bought this game if if it came out and there were like ten out of ten reviews, and p everyone was saying it's like a it's an entirely different game and that it's it's fantastic. It's the best Pokemon game ever. There's actual effort in it. I would have bought it, but I haven't bought it. Yeah, fair, but you're one guy, and they're making bank and breaking records, yeah. so you also, I think their reply to you is, I don't give a shit about you. You're also <laughs> not the target audience at all. You gotta remember, the target audience is either kids or people with kids. Because no, I know, but, they're, but we've determined that they're buying it regardless, okay? If they're buying it regardless. Yeah. No matter what, the, what anyone says, they're buying it regardless. They're in. I'm talking about exactly. me and people like me. You could get that audience that's already going to buy They don't care about it. you. And then, why not? Uh, you, could, you could double the amount of money you make, potentially. There's so few Jackson, of you, like, though, Jackson. Most people still yeah. buy Pokemon anyway. Mm -hmm. Also, that's like <sighs> if you said, well, if Coca-Cola didn't put fructose corn syrup in their brand, then maybe health-conscious people would buy it. Well, it's like, they're really not the intended audience. Damn, that's a really you good know? analogy. Holy shit. <laughs> and in the, even then, they Thanks. make Coke with real sugar. And it's like, you do get some other people who don't like high fructose, fructose corn syrup, but you'll never get the audience of people who want a healthy drink. Mm -hmm. So someone in our chat actually made a good counterpoint, saying, I think the amount of extra fans they'd gain would be negligible compared to the extra cost to actually make a good game. So like, <laughs> maybe hiring more than 10 people to yeah. work on the Pokemon well, game. And, and remember, it. remember, that ties into that. Pokemon is the biggest franchise on the planet. They don't need more fans. They already got yeah. them. You cannot have more fans than Pokemon does right now. Otherwise, you would be the highest grossing franchise on the planet. I'm just, I really it. hope... I, I, I'm also on Kaya's team here. I want to see how lazy they can get before <laughs> things start to actually take a toll. I want to see them continue to strip more and more things away and devolve further and further into unfinished clunky betas that they put out for 60 bucks. I really hope Ooh. the next one is even worse. I hope yeah, I want they, it to regress, definitely. I, I hope think they that start would a Pokemon... I hope they start a Pokemon subscription model. Ooh, and every that'd be huge. Every yeah. month, Ooh. they send you like, Oh, this is our newest game, Pokemon Turquoise! And it's very clearly like a ROM hack of Pokemon Emerald they made in a week. And you pay I'm like $40 do a that. month. With, yeah. with like a subscription model where every other month they re-release another Pokemon. But like Into reused the game, yeah. meshes and shit, yeah. Yeah, turn Pokemon into a live service game. I, I, actually, that's that's why that's have they a not fucking done that? that's a fucking genius idea for Game Freak. You know how Nintendo has it the emulators to pull off. You know how Nintendo has the emulators for their Switch, where it's like you can open the SNES and play all the S SNES titles, and then like every month they're mm -hmm. like, we're bringing three new titles to the SNES. Game Freak should do that with Pokemon. Go okay for for twenty dollars a month. You can play the Game Freak Classics. Here's Pokemon Red. And then three months later, they go, here's Pokemon Blue. People would pay for that. 
And then another three months later, here's Pokemon Yellow. Sorry it took so long. We wanted to make sure it ran perfectly on the Switch. 10 frames a second. <laughs> yeah. And it still has <laughs> they're, bugs. They're going to yeah. run out of colors. <laughs> Here is a Scarlet Red. This is Carmine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> People would eat that shit up. They'd love it. They'd go, I can play Pokemon on the Switch, the old ones I grew up with. Oh, my God. I'll pay full price. Is there something that Game Freak could actually do that would excite you guys and reinvigorate you? Make a the good game. <laughs> Literally the bare minimum, Jackson. Voice acting, more animations, because they've been recycling the same fucking animations now for so many games. Well, I guess so many is not accurate to say since there's only been like two Switch games, but they're just using the same animations over and over mm -hmm. again. Add more animations, add voice acting, like literally the bare minimum. And Jackson. make it run at more than 15 frames per second. Jackson. The game just yeah, looks so you... ugly to me as well, It's though. so ugly. Oh, yeah. Half of it's untextured, half of it is literally untextured. The game is beyond awful to look at. It is a fucking eyesore. Jackson, I want to remind you, I, I'm a big fan of Pokemon. I really like the franchise. It's just the last games have been so god-awful. I'm not interested in them. If Game Freak just made a good quality game, I would go back to buying and playing them. Just straight up. That's all they have to do. Yeah, they don't even have to refine the actual combat formula for me. They yep. just need to, like, put effort into it. The fun of Pokemon is immersing yourself in the world where you meet all these creatures, you discover new ones, you train them to be strong, and you become the champion. That's the fun. If Game Freak just made a game, they don't have to change much of the gameplay, maybe some additions here and there, but they just focused on making a fun story with interesting design Pokemon, a cool world, some pu fun puzzles, that's it. Just keep it simple. Oh, I yeah. think they should go the full like life sim, uh, life sim route like Persona. Like actually <laughs> invest in like RPG elements and stuff. <laughs> That'd be really cool. It's not terrible. They should also, they should also invest in new creatives there because the new Pokemon are fucking ass. The they look ugly. The majority of them yeah. are so fucking bad. <laughs> oh my god, they're fucking awful. I hate the motorcycle Pokemon so much. It's so, it's so ugly. Motorcycle Pokemon. I thought that was one of the it more creative is. ones, to be honest. I hate it. I what absolutely it hate it. Maridon. Like Maridon, I think. How do you say it? Mm -hmm. Jackson, to, uh, to hit on your point of Persona 5, by the way, Persona in general, Persona 5 especially, would be a great place to copy like a RPG combat style if they want to do something different. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. combat is just so boring to me in Pokemon. <laughs> you guys said it's fine, but it's yeah. just so brain dead to me. These are motorcycles? That's fucking dumb. Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> That's the gimmick yeah, of this one. Yeah. Yeah. Motorcycle, yeah. <laughs> also, Jack, well, you keep in mind, Jackson, they can't make it too in depth and too out there because it is made for kids first. You know? Also, uh, I, I completely forgot about this when you were talking about competition. There is kind of competition. It's not one to one by any means, but mm. like Persona had kind of a creature creator creature true. element to it. True. As well yeah. as, of course, the, the parent game Shin Megami Tensei. That is I was true. Looking, I was looking at some gameplay for that. They have so many fucking cool little creatures that you can catch, <laughs> like a little Sandman. It's so cool. Well, keep in mind, though, Persona and Shin Megami Tensei are very much more adult-focused. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's literally, totally literally one of the better. monsters in Persona 5 is a giant talking a penis. penis. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I love that guy. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's what Pokemon needs more of, giant talking penises. <laughs> True. Ah, oh, Game Freak. Ugh. If you're listening, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight up, you know? Yeah. Uh, I hope they put this episode on, like, in the lobby of Game Freak. Let everyone listen to it as they come in for work. Oh, I like think... Of, like, oh. Elderly Japanese businessmen cackling as they walk past and, like, drive-by fart on the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> they don't I give hope, a shit. I hope they that just they, go to the uh, offices to have money fights, throw fists of dollars at each other. I hope that they <laughs> they take the money that they set aside for developing a new game and instead spend it on- Maybe I should shave my testicles! Well, thank God Manscaped is there. Because they're going to see your forest down below and say, Ugh! Clean that up! That's terrible. You're going to say, you know what? It is. You're right. I'm sorry. Please give to me the Performance Package 4.0. And they'll say, you mean the one where you'll find the Signature Lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer designed to trim loose skin, as well as the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver that'll help show off your new 2022 self. And if you're going to complete yes. the set, they're going to make sure that Manscaped throws in a travel bag as well as anti-chafing boxer briefs as a free gift. And you're going to say, that's, that's the, the one. one. Oh, holy shit. 
We said the same exact thing because we both knew exactly what we were thinking. Make sure to show yourself off for the new year that's coming up. We only have, as of this episode, like a month left until that new year. And you're going to want to make sure when your New Year's resolution hits, you're going to be clean down there. You don't want to get kissed on New Year's Eve and have her stick a hand down there and go, Oh, it's trapped. It's like a cobweb down here. What the fuck? So don't do that. Clean up down there, you fucking caveman. Whether your resolution is to work out more, travel to new places, be sure to travel to manscaped.com for the exclusive offer of 20% off and free shipping with code OFFICIAL. Get 20% off and free shipping with code OFFICIAL at manscaped.com. New year, no pubes in 2022 with Manscaped. Manscaped.com, code OFFICIAL for 20% off and free shipping. But wait, cut all of that out. Cut everything out of this you know what danny just cut this whole ad but don't cut it out of the episode cut it with a kami koto knife kami koto makes great japanese steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques from japan you want to trust the land of anime of course you do you've seen anime it's cool kami koto builds on the legacy of over 800 years of japanese technology and expertise in crafting steel to make knives that have been meticulously handcrafted from traditional tech needs each knife comes in a beautiful heavy duty ash wood box to make sure that that knife is stored safely and hey when, even when it's put away not being used it looks great they use steel sourced from the mills in japan using japanese steel of course and each blade is crafted using techniques that have been honed and perfected by japanese knife smith generations each kamikoto knife goes through a rigorous 19 step process that takes several years from start to finish to complete they're going to be unbelievably sharp they're going to also let you have a whetstone if you want to add that to your uh purchase and also kamikoto knives are used by several chefs working at michelin star restaurants you can check out a list of michelin star chefs on their website if you're super duper curious but if you're even more curious and saying well how how could i possibly get one of these well i'll tell you kamikoto is running a black friday sale and is offering our listeners an extra 50 usd off of any purchase with code official on top of our special offers Go to kamikoto.com slash official to get your knives and help support our channel. That's going to be an additional $50 off of any purchase with code official, but make sure you go to k-a-m-i-k-o-t-o dot com slash official. Thank you. All right. Was that all? We are leaving in the yeah, we, space for the third one. We have to do the third okay, one in post, yeah. I want to talk about this now, if the Pokemon conversation is over and all our hopes have been dashed. Uh, Boogie took to Twitter again, this time not to announce his OnlyFans once again, but but to announce he has a mild form of cancer, yeah, as he I saw says. That. Have you guys that... seen this? Yeah. Yeah, it was unfortunate timing with the last episode, to be honest. Um, <laughs> like, well, the he episode says... went up, and then the day after that diagnosis... Came out and yeah, like, the whole oh, internet mm. is on his ass. That's not on us. Plus, he beclowned himself so much, so that's on him. He says, I debated not sharing this, but I got my official diagnosis today, so why not? I do, in fact, have a blood cancer called polycythemia vera. It's extremely slow moving. Many people live with it for decades. No big deal. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, You should not be that worried about it, and I'm not going to be that worried about it. I'll just do what my doctor tells me to. So I, a, I think you should be a little worried about your health. That, that, yeah. clearly... <laughs> the, the way you read that made it sound like you were saying you're not worried about it. That was in Boogie's tweet, just to, for yes. clarification. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I was quoting his tweets here. And then he, uh, let me repeat, I'll just do what my doctor tells me to do. Yeah, except losing weight, which he's been begging you to do for like decades now. Boogie, this is not the time to say you're not going to take this seriously. Yeah. Um, this was met... Well, okay, first of all, apparently this was may have been caused by him taking testosterone for like a decade. What, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Like, how would testosterone cause blood cancer? Well, testosterone has lots of side effects unless, you know, 
if it's something in your body that you're not meant to be taking, like if you're a woman or if you're a man with low testosterone, it can have side effects to have more than you are supposed to. But isn't it, that a, is a naturally isn't it produced like a natural? Body. Yeah, I'm, it's hard for me to like. Yeah, but they know, use synthetic analogs. They don't like uh, milk testosterone from other men's so testicles like... and then donate it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like legit testosterone. <laughs> a testosterone form, yeah. yeah testosterone this should be. I'll donate. Why? I'll step up and be a hero. <laughs> Free range testosterone. <laughs> I don't want a needle in my ball sack. Fuck that. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! I thought maybe they just like this squeeze it out of me or something. No, no, you're thinking of cum. Um, somebody alerts him that this may have been a side effect of the testosterone, and Boogie replies, Correct, in fact, I had to sign a piece of paper saying that this is a known possible risk, so here we are. I don't wow. know, I guess if he has low testosterone because of the obesity, his doctor may have put him on it, to help him, like, get more energy and work out, maybe? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, maybe. No idea. Um, Charlie, apparently you called him out in a video? Recently, he replied to this in a tweet. Oh, yeah, I saw the tweet. It, it's in reference to when I talked about his uh, video about like where he was guilt tripping fans if they weren't doing enough, where he was talking about his oh, money right, situation. Yeah. I wasn't even like insulting him either. Like I was just talking about how like that kind of behavior I always find to be very not great. But I wasn't just being ruthlessly mean to Boogie. But what did he say? Well, many people I, are ruthless and mean to him. Said, I don't think Charlie... someone pointed out to him, and then he was asking if it was before or after the cancer diagnosis. And he said, oh like, he God. strikes me as someone that wouldn't care about the diagnosis anyway. Well, that's what he said about he's... You. It was in reply to that saying, tweet, yeah. He's saying, uh, okay. but please let me know if he's spreading false rumors about me being diagnosed. I'll take it to my YouTube rep. You're gonna... Tell mom? Like, what does that even mean? Uh, talking to my YouTube rep. Are you gonna get legal involved? For what? Yeah, I have and no idea. I know for what. He is angry because some people on the internet took this news with a grain of salt. They were a little skeptical because Boogie has an, shall we just say, an extensive history of uh, contradicting himself, saying things and then sometimes saying other things that turned the first thing he said out to be a lie. So everyone is like, this is kind of convenient. And by the way, I looked up the symptoms of this disease. It is a very slow moving cancer. Apparently you have a life expectancy of like 10 to 20 years, which <sighs> boogie buddy, you didn't have that anyway. Like th that was your life expectancy. I, I don't think he says that himself. Anything. Yeah, he says that himself, but still like, also, I, I don't, I don't, I, be I honestly believe him. And I've followed boogie for like, a few years um so i've seen he's like lies and stuff like that I, i'll just come out I, I believe that he has cancer and i like well, i don't like, think he's lying about it i think that's a yeah. shit take i i don't yeah same yeah i don't think he'd lie about it either if he did he'd just be like a genuinely scummy awful human being that's like you know there, i i don't One see the, the worst scenario things you where can lying do. about that would help yeah yeah, I think he, I think even that's beyond what Boogie exactly. Would yeah, do, like that's that's know? just terrible. Like lying about that. He also claims he had skin cancer before, but isn't skin cancer like just a mole that you can get removed? Yeah, well, it depends. Uh, my, it totally my depends. My grandfather, yeah. my grandfather has had a lot of skin cancer, and it's basically just a trip to the doctor to get it cut out. Yeah, that shit scares me. Whenever I see a fucking mole on my body, I'm like paranoid. It's like, wait, was that there? Last Same. Year. Oh hmm. my god, it scares me all the fucking time. <laughs> like, you'd think you'd remember a mole on your own body, but turns out no. <laughs> I really should go get my moles checked out. I've been meaning to for like the last five years. I live directly underneath that giant hole in the sky, whatever it's called, the ozone hole. <laughs> what, what? What is it? Yep. No, you yep. you got it. The yeah, that's hole. it. Yeah, it, it is the ozone hole, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I live under that, so like, there's a heightened risk of skin cancer in like. The northern section of Australia where I live, um, and I get random moles and stuff, but I'm just really lazy with that kind of stuff. I probably should go do it. Same Zs. I don't want to get looked all over my fucking body by a doctor. Like I have a mole on my penis, doc. Um, and anyway, to wrap it up, Boogie Dan gets mad at the skeptics. He says, also quote, just show your medical records. Fuck you, you parasocial piece of shit. You have no right to my medical records, and you'll never see them. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Getting riled up. Look, the thing is, you don't get to get mad at people for being a bit skeptical of you, Boogie. That's the thing. Like, um, 
sure making fun of him for having cancer if he does have cancer is kind of low, uh, low hanging fruit and probably shouldn't do it but at the same time you don't get to be, get mad about it because again you lie about almost everything all the fucking time people are a bit bored of your lies so well he's also like the he's boy who cried wolf he's also bred a portion of his audience that just wants to hate on him so you know there, there's going to be fans who listen to it and they feel bad and that's normal you know and if he's not lying that's great but even if he's not lying, which I don't think he is at all. I don't think he um, is either. Yeah, even if he's not lying, you're going to have people coming in going, Oh, Boogie's lying because he lies about everything. Like, show me the records. Come on, show him, pussy. You know, like, they're, they're going to want to push it because that's just Plus, what they you're do. you're making this a public thing. You're making a public spectacle. Yeah, so... Hey, everybody, I have cancer. The worst thing that can happen to a person. Also, you, it's none of your fucking business if I have cancer. Fuck you. Okay, <laughs> then keep it to yourself. The, this is this parasocial shit. Lol cows invite it into their lives, and then they get butthurt when it happens. Can you guys think of like... any specific cases of uh, internet people or figures lying about a cancer diagnosis, and then them eventually being found out? Okay. Oh, yep. tons, tons. Not at the top of my head with like names and screenshots. Oh, I, I can, can think show of one right off the top now, of my but head. people. Go for it. Sure. Her name was uh, Emily. She was a RuneScape streamer. She, a few years back, made a big thing about having cancer and raising money for her cancer treatments. Well, it turns out she faked cancer and just wanted some money. And she is still on Twitch to this day, same persona, same everything, and doing just fine, even though it's well known that she faked cancer. I'm trying to remember what I mean, her. That's not a crazy name. fake, Jackson. That we Does she claim that she's like in remission? Is who you're talking about, no. Charlie? What's that? Emily is pro. Yep, Emily is pro. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Literally, literally, she has a Know Your Meme page called Emily Faked Cancer. Have you guys seen Bethesda's reply to Mick Gordon? Yeah, it was so fucking empty. It was. So just to the, give an update from last week. Is that the one where they just said, like, uh, we believe our team and fuck Mick and that's it? We have evidence yeah. to confirm our team side of things, and mm -hmm. we'll release it in the proper venues in due time. Yeah, it's mm. just fucking nothing. Right. Um, yeah, they say, red, well, they went on Twitter and released a screenshot of a report, not a report, of a just statement, basically, and they say, we stand ready with full and complete documented evidence to disclose in an appropriate venue as needed. I think it's needed, Bethesda. <laughs> I mean, the man pants you publicly. I think it's needed. Now, Plus, you started that's... this bullshit. You started this on Reddit. That's not a, like an appropriate venue for this kind of situation to to start with your... The yeah, that's that too. Like, we're, okay, why didn't you take Mick's side when one of your other employees was going one of your, after one of your contractors on Reddit of all places? That's, again, yeah, like you say, not an appropriate venue. Um... And they provide no further evidence. This is nothing. This has nothing other than what um, Marty Stratton already said over two and a half years ago. They add nothing and they blame Mick for supposed harassment that they're now getting, which is disingenuous because Mick went out of his way multiple times to remind people that he loved and respected the Bethesda team and the It Software team and that his beef was really just with this one dickhead. Yeah. He, like, literally, he stressed multiple times, like, do not, please do not ever harass these people. I love them. Don't do it. Oh, so, I'm so tired of that excuse. Like, whenever something blows up like that, people really use that as a defense. Like, the, oh, we're getting hate mail now. Please. So this is clearly bad. Stop, stop attacking us. It's like, if you're getting hate mail, that. if you're getting hate mail, the response to make it stop shouldn't just be, oh, stop attacking us. Like, cut it out. It should be, OK, here's us defending our position and here's why you shouldn't hate us. Here's our evidence that, like, you know, we're right. It's a, it's a pathetic attempt to discredit the other side by, like, yeah. pointing to the just the most insane agitators of that side. It's just dumb. It's so Which, you know, usually usually people don't even have any like receipts to back up any supposed harassment. Like people are leaving you angry voice messages. Let's hear them. I don't believe you. Again, that's going to be my theme on the internet now. I don't fucking believe any of these people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mick Gordon is in the comments and he basically just copy pasted his um, link to the article that he wrote. He didn't say anything new, but so it's a full blown. He said she said now. And I guess we'll see where that goes. Yeah, I hope oh, they, we see where it goes. 
I hope so too. It's fascinating. Also, they said that this uh, mix account was one sided. Like, bitch, uh, what what was one sided? Was you having that statement out for two and a half years? Mick adding his side to it by definition makes it two sided now. Dumb. Okay. Agreed. Uh, what else you guys got? I have. I have a good Elon one. Musk Twitter. Good. Okay. You go. Okay. Yeah. I, I put this in there. Uh, I don't have a link because it's a story that happened to me. And, uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. I just kind of left. So, we, for those of you listening, we have a little topics channel. It's how we, you know, we keep track of what we want to talk about and make sure we don't run over each other. Uh, so I kind of just left a single sentence in there for my own reminder. Meanwhile, Kaya and Jackson are posting like 30 links a day that just buried it. So I went to Disney uh, like last week, basically, and we stopped at a Starbucks. You know, me and my group of friends, we were getting tired, wanted some coffee. So there's like a giant we were at Epcot and there's like a giant building Starbucks there. There's a huge line and like. 20 people behind the counter at any time and like big like fucking Starbucks megaplex. So we all order coffee and I'm waiting for my coffee and I look over and there is a woman with a child in a stroller. And he's he's probably like four. But the important part for the story is he's young enough to be riding in a stroller. Right. And she takes a large Starbucks cup, which is a pretty large size, pretty, pretty, pretty big amount, pops the lid off dumps whatever like remaining liquids in there, like it was basically empty, opens a thing of Coke and pours the entire bottle of Coke in there, fills it up completely, then puts a sippy lid on it and hands it to the child. And I don't know, do I call like child services or young enough to ride in a stroller? Probably about four, I would say. That's four three up. five somewhere <laughs> around there you're naive if you don't think that is like exceptionally common oh so. i know it is and i think it's disgusting that's sad that handing sad. your child a whenever... full like adult size cup of soda because they're crying for it well you gotta get big and strong somehow <laughs> at what true. age does it become acceptable for growing. kids to have coke then i don't know man i, I think when if they're you're old enough in a... to vote <laughs> so here's uh, yeah, the thing. We should start here's carding thing. people for, here's the for thing. Uh, yeah. Give for soda. <laughs> give give a kid candy. Sure. Give him a treat. But to give him a full, like fucking huge bottle of soda, and they're like Well the issue is also you know that it's not the first time that person no, has done that. Not presumably. at all. No. I think constantly. about this a lot whenever I watch TLC, like shows like the Thousand Pound Sisters, and one of them has twins now, babies, and I just look at it like them kids are fucked. That is like the worst fucking family to be born into. That kid is going to have diabetes by eight. Yeah. And that yeah. is just misery. And it, I don't know. It's just to me, I think there's a just a weird moral quandary there of like, is it right? Is that OK? Because like that's that's definitely not healthy. But yeah, the kid can't make an educated fucking opinion exactly. on it. He doesn't know if Coke is healthy for him or not. You're meant to yeah. be the adult in this situation, and you're meant to determine if this thing is healthy for the kid or not. Right. Spoiler, it's not. It's fucking And, not. and I Coke. understand I understand <laughs> kids want treats and candy, and you can give them some, but, like, I don't think it's a good idea to give your kid an entire giant bottle of fucking Coke. Well, why are you telling us? You should have told her. You should have sat her down yeah. and gave her an educational <laughs> talking to. <laughs> Should've been like, ma'am, I know you're at Disney having fun with your family, but you're a terrible parent. <laughs> Let me explain why. <laughs> yeah, what I'm looking at right now is very upsetting. That'll man. end well. Here's my playbook. Report to Disney. Well, what's she gonna do? Fight Andrew? <laughs> like, the worst <laughs> she can do is walk away. <laughs> I don't know, I wouldn't want some lady screaming at me at Disneyland over this, to be I'm, fair. Well, I'm sure Andrew would've liked that. Yeah, it would've been a, actually a big <laughs> part of my experience. Those are you should have awesome followed people. them around. Followed them around Disneyland or Disney World, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to see what else they're feeding the kid. <laughs> yeah, just, just <laughs> stock on <laughs> notes and send it to CPS. Guys, I have to go. I'm on a mission. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun <laughs> idea. You could look for bad parents at Disney. That'd be so Ooh, fun. Then you call them out. Make a little blog. The bad yeah. parents of Disney. Yeah, There's oh, no such thing. thing. If you're taking up. your kid to Disney World, you're instantly best parent. Hmm. 
That might actually take off if you made a Twitter account or something where you anonymously shame them. You could blur the faces and whatnot, but you take a photo of like <laughs> fat woman spotted giving toddler coke. Hi, it'd, be funny, it'd be funny if you blurred the uh, parent's face but left the kid's face unblurred and blamed <laughs> the kid. <laughs> Hi, that's a great idea. I'd like to announce my anonymous blog coming soon. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, you should, I think that'd be fun. Fuck yeah. I don't know. It was it was something that Go just luck. left an impression on me. I, I was thinking about it for the rest of the day. You know, I don't think you should be yeah, feeding really a kid that you young draw the soda line, though. that regularly. You know, something here about kids like, at Disney World. That's the line. The, 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 the line I think is thirteen. Once you're thirteen, you can start having coke. I think once they're old enough to hmm. make healthy choices is when you should be giving them that. Yeah. You yeah. know. That's when they should be given the choice. Because yeah. that's that's the difference. Like in American culture specifically, or especially, it's like Coke is seen as a drink when it should be seen as a dessert. It's loaded <laughs> with all sorts of terrible shit like caffeine, sugar, and all this horrible shit, high fructose corn syrup, whatever. Stuff that's fine in moderation. But, you know, people don't eat cake for dinner, N like regular, normal nutrition. You know, you don't eat a whole piece of cake a whole entire cake for dinner, but they'll drink a Coke with dinner and they'll think nothing of it. So you give wait, that to kids, your kid. My kid's thirsty, kids known, I'll give him a Coke. You don't even think kids about are, it. Kids are known to eat a lot of cake though. So do we rule cakes out for but them then as that's well? But then that's when you be a parent. Cake. That's when you be a parent and you go, you can have one piece of cake, not an entire cake for dinner, you know? You don't eat like that. So why is it the idea is if you have a sugary, really bad for you, teeth rotting beverage, you're just like, yeah, you can have that, and don't forget your dessert, haha. -ha. It should be in that, you know what I mean? It should be part of that. Well, in the parents' defense, the Coke is gonna rot the baby's teeth, but they're the baby teeth, so... True. He has another shot at life. Yeah, they're expendable. <laughs> once those fall out. <laughs> once he's 400 pounds and he finally has all his adult teeth, that's right. I used to drink so much <laughs> Coke when I was a kid. Me too. Me Same. fucking too. Yeah. Do and you feel it, bad about it now? Yeah, I couldn't imagine 100%. doing that anymore. Hundred percent. I wish I didn't do it. It made me a flabby boy. It made me like chunky because I drank like two or three a day. Oh, oh, yeah, again, only two or three. The line, though, because some you know, because I, my parents my parents monitored it. My parents when I was growing up, they said you can have one. Their whole point uh, was they bought Coke and they said you can have one Coke a day. But I would sneak them. I'd, I'd go to the fridge and get one, and my dad would be like, did you have Piece one? And I'd shit. say, no, that was my first one, because I was a fucking little shit. Uh, they trusted you. Yeah, and I ruined it. Yeah, I you were a little outlaw. <laughs> I used to drink so much Coke, especially during, like, sleepovers and shit. Oh, uh -huh, my God. Of course. I, I was a fiend. Of course. Well, sleepovers yeah. were special occasions, though. That's like a cheat day. Well, and when you were when you were a kid, there was no better feeling than going to a sleepover, a party, and just having pizza and coke and just powering oh, that down fuck. all day while listening to "Word Up" by Corn. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and also, this is very different. Like kids sneaking out and doing dumb, uh, dumb kid mm -hmm. stuff is very different from parents teaching <laughs> parents this behavior and encouraging it. Yeah. Right. And I mean. They, again, where do you draw the line? Like, we can't have the government right. fucking coming in and seizing people's children. If like, it's we're not seizing them, but I think, I think, I think there should be a licensing system. Like, like, like let me, let me, said. let me put it this way. Oh, if I the said kid... there should be a licensing system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said when yeah. they should be, they should only be allowed Coke when they're allowed to vote. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, no, <laughs> you should, okay, you should need to apply so for Coke, the Coke. So Coke should be a restricted substance like tobacco yeah. and firearms. Yeah, well, right. once you're 18. <laughs> right. Well, 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 I you, you can't, corn syrup well, should be. Let me, let me. You can't give kids alcohol. Let me, yeah, let me put it this way. If the kid was older, uh, old enough to be like, Mom, I want a Coke. Well, it's not a kid anymore. No, no, no. Oh, you know, okay. Well, yeah, no, if he, was like, if he was like 12 years old, he was like, Mom, I want a Coke. I want a soda. And the mom was like, okay, you know, you can have one. Or, oh, no, not till we have dinner or whatever. I wouldn't have cared. But the fact he was like four years old in a stroller yeah. and just screaming and crying and the mom gave him a coke and then he was pacified it's like what the fuck you know I, yeah, I, to me that that, that yeah. is definitely beyond the line whatever that's the line what, is that's, that's what beyond stuck it. with me yeah I you didn't see but she also dashed it up a bit with some vodka <laughs> to really make him fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> gotta counterbalance all the sugar it'll make him hyper do you guys remember your first beer did did your parents ever give you like a sip of beer i when do you were no I, I wasn't actually. with my parents or anything but i was um in turkey on my own on vacation 
I don't I don't remember how old I was, but I went to the local bodega trying to get a beer, which was illegal for me at the time. So I was all like, you know, super nervous. I'm being a fucking little shit. But nobody cares. So I bought the beer, went home. Had Wait, a couple like of how sips. old roughly were you? 12. Teenage, teenage years. I don't know. Like but you visibly 18 under 18, Turkey. definitely. Oh, I had baby face. Uh, dude, uh, in Turkey, they don't give a fuck. Also, all the bodega men, they just literally leave their, uh, especially if you're in a vacation place, they just leave their kids behind their cash register. So it'll be like a little <laughs> so it's kids, 10 year old doing it. Kids you up. selling beer to kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a That's Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this was way before all the super like restrictions on alcohol and the heavy taxes and whatnot. Anyway, bring it back home. And I have a couple of sips and I had never had beer before. So I thought, this is disgusting. Wait, did yeah, I brought, buy like a spoiled product? Ew, this is gross. And mm -hmm. I, I literally thought that I would kill myself or something and that there must be something wrong with the batch I bought. So I didn't drink any, the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I still feel reaction. that, I still feel that way about beer. It's like, oh, it's so same. fucking gross. It is gross. I'm, just, yeah. I'm not a beer I'm guy. Yeah. Same. I'm so happy that my dad gave me a sip of beer when I was like 10 years old. Uh, because it turned me off beer permanently. Ooh. I don't ever want to. I don't want to touch beer ever again. My so um, disgusting. my parents didn't <laughs> drink at all. Like not even, not even tempted. Not even on occasion. They just neither of them were drinkers. So growing up, what stopped me from it is they were like, "Oh, it's just bad for you, and you shouldn't do it." And like, here's why. And here's like, my mom sat me down. She was like, "Here's why I don't drink, and my personal reasons, and it's unhealthy." Blah blah. blah. So I didn't drink until I went to college. And I was like, oh, I'm at a party, let's fucking drink. And eventually, when I lived with them after college for a bit, I started drinking myself because I was like, oh, fuck it. You know, whatever. I'm a young adult. I'm going to drink beers. And I remember I'd go out to like dinner with my dad after work and I'd order beers with dinner and I'd be like, here, have a sip. And he'd be like, no. And I'd be like, here, dad, have a beer. It's good. And he'd be like, no, it's gross. It was like a you reverse. Had the reversed. You were forcing yeah. your dad. To <laughs> yeah, it was the reverse the scenario. Fuck? You're trying to make him have his first drink. Did you just sneak Coca Cola in his food too? <laughs> but I'd, I'd get a new beer and I'd be like, "Oh, that's a, that's a pretty good brand." Here, Dad, have a sip, and he'd be like, "I don't want it. No, get it away." <laughs> your parents are cool. My parents were cool. I, yeah. I do. Beer is one of the like more tolerable forms of alcohol to me. I like tasting the local beers also if I'm in a new place. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. When I was in America, I remember uh, we went into a candy shop and they had all these fucking different kinds of beer that were just joke brands, basically. One of them had like uh, Osama Bin Laden on the bottle. So that was a kind of novelty shit that I like to try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah like I the last that. thing I trust. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I am well, not drinking anything products. with like, Osama had... Bin Laden on it. Well, it also had other like world leaders like Xi Jinping, the North Korean leader, you know, uh, <laughs> Elon Musk and Osama bin Laden. It was just a joke brand that slapped random names on different. Yeah, products. but I wouldn't consume product by like a joke brand because I those those jokesters. I don't know. I don't know what their like quality control is. They're probably making well, it in fair. a shack. But I assume I they don't that. put up straight up cyanide in it. One bottle isn't going to kill you, most likely. I'm still here. <laughs> the only beer I regularly drank and genuinely enjoyed back when I drank was not your father's root beer. It is a uh, beer that is spiced to taste just like root beer, and it was genuinely delicious, and I fucking loved it, and I drank like two or three in one sitting when I really drank beer. Fucking excellent. I just, I, I just don't get it. Beer tastes gross to me. Always has, always will. Yeah, I agree All on the right. most part. What was your first drink, Charlie? My first drink in general or my first beer? Al yeah, well, alcoholic drink. Uh, I think it was Fireball, actually. Jeez, that's hard. Yeah, I went, I, that, this was the old stuff, too, back when it used to like produce antifreeze in your tummy. Uh, I'm talking like <laughs> a good formula. <laughs> how, old, how old were you? I was 19. Oh, okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah. It was in college. It was well, actually, no, no, no. I would have been eighteen at the time when I had that. Uh, so your parents, your parents never gave you a sip of beer at all. I mean, they asked me if I wanted to, but th you have to remember, I was also that really like hardcore religious nutbag Scared. guy. I was like, oh, absolutely yeah. not. This is the pathway to sin. Which is really <laughs> funny, Charlie, because both your parents still drink to this day. Yeah. <laughs> 
Your parents were just trying to make you cool. They were trying to soften you up. Oh, they were absolutely just trying to make me cool. They had to have realized I was such a like loser, destined for nothingness as a social uh, in the social aspect. Son, I'm just trying to get you laid. Yeah, like, like they, they even I, I even remember they even sat me down one time. They're like, you know, if you want to try weed, we're totally fine with it. And I was like, absolutely <laughs> not. I would never. We'll, we'll they were probably you, super son. high at the time. Yeah. In fact, I'm high right now, son. <laughs> <laughs> no, so what, we're, what, we're, what we're saying is probably have to get high to live with a religious fanatic like Charlie for the, for the duration of his childhood. What we're saying, son, is you should try weed. In fact, go to the medicine cabinet, pull yeah. out the first bottle. It just blows a cloud in my face, like, please, God, <laughs> anything. <laughs> just stop being such a square. I have some pills for my back pain if you want to get in on that. <laughs> what instigated what instigated your adventures into the religious fanaticism? It was, it was a neighborhood friend. He he was the son of a pastor who was very preachy and it rubbed off on me. I just Jesus. believed in everything and uh, got fearful well, of better everything. Than the pastor God, rubbed off on you. True. God should <laughs> God should hire that kid though if he was <laughs> recruiting kids at that age. That's yeah, that, that guy that, that kid was also a fucking menace too. I remember he went to my neighbor's backyard and took a shit on their trampoline. So that is evil. Yeah, it, it <laughs> was <laughs> downright evil. It was satanic, is what it was. <laughs> and this is the guy he took religious advice yeah, from. It was fucking diabolical. He just straight took a fat shit on his trampoline. Was there any rationale or reasoning no, behind it? They just shit on his trampoline. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I'm pretty happy that I never went through a religious phase or a shitting on trampoline phases. Yeah. You got lucky. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, guys? Um, I mean, there's like super minor Twitter updates if you care. Nothing too funny happens. Apparently I Elon saw this a... morning that everyone is leaving to something oh, called Hive. Hive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just one of many knockoffs, and it's not going to take. And I'll tell you why it's not going to take. So on the night of, I think, the Thursday to Friday last week, there, somebody started a rumor that Twitter was going to go down right then and there. Something, Some internal engineer leaked that Twitter is going down tonight, boys. And the fucking people had their hairs on fire. It was like apocalyptic predictions it looked like the day after tomorrow the movie and everybody was so scared like oh no it's happening here follow me on mastodon.cohort.hive whatever the fuck 64 character link that i'm posting and then the sun rose and nothing happens because turns out you can't trust rumors or anonymous sources that journalists fucking cite because they can just make up those sources and they hate elon so nothing happened but that day I realized that the $44 billion that this man paid probably was worth it because he didn't buy an app. He bought a drug empire. People are so addicted to that fucking app. They will never leave. Ever. For anything else. It is insane yeah, I didn't to see me. It dying. I didn't see it dying at all. No. Well, no, I, I, do, no I, I could absolutely see a world where it dies. Like, not from lack of use or anything, but just because Elon will never make his fucking money back on it. Like, I don't see a world where he somehow monetizes it to make back that investment, plus the interest oh, he's, that he has to yeah, pay on okay. his loan. So you it think still that he'll die? Like... He would simply no, 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 sell like, it to somebody yeah. else. I, I mean, like, him as the leader would die. Oh, yeah. I mean, that. yeah, he might. Um... The other thing that happened is he made a Twitter poll just for shows and then unbanned Trump, who has since not used the account. Because, I think, for Trump to use this account again, Trump would actually have to swallow his pride and admit that Twitter is better than Truth Social, which yeah. no one fucking wants to use. <laughs> Holy and fuck, I don't I think that's going to happen. Social. How could hmm? you forget about Truth Social? It's shit oh, yeah, is, it's iconic. The only who use it? like 12 probably i have no idea that shit is so goofy though i check in occasionally oh no yeah. wonder i it's only available in the u.s yeah that's the only place oh, where right. the truth it's... exists nikki it sounds like a fucking fbi honeypot like hey donald trump supporters here's a app just for you also give us permission to access the file system on your phone <laughs> um other than uh, that apparently wait. It's got hmm. 2 million unique uh, users, as reported in September 2022, True Social. Uh, those are all users within America, right? So that's 
It's not bad. Well, let, well let's no, let's let's hit the comparison here. Be. Let's get the comparison. Twitter has four hundred million unique users. Yeah, but it's international. That's what I'm saying. Like I've, this is only yeah, American. I suppose, but it's and still, it's only been around for a year. It's still a far, far cry no. from anything. The, there could be two possibilities either like two-thirds of all americans are on truth social or donald trump could be fibbing a little i guess we'll never find out the truth yeah. um because people don't lie on the internet as we found out today jackson yeah elon added an option to report child porn apparently <laughs> Yeah, I saw that. That's actually good. Yeah, finally How is that some not good an option news. beforehand. That is actually a good news, but it is also mind blowing that this was not its own category yeah. of two reports before, for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't buy that Elon did this out of the kindness of his heart. By the way, as we, as I like, brought this up multiple times now from the Verge article, uh, Twitter has a massive problem with child porn, which prevents them from monetizing yes. profiles uh, and make an OnlyFans competitor. So I think that's why he's clamping down on it now. But the fact that, like, here's how a report system should actually work. There should be different, different, like, severities and priorities of things that get reported. Like, somebody hurting your feelings should be very far down Low, in the report yeah. queue. Right, and, and at the top should be things like child porn, you know, revenge porn, and then whatever, gore, animal abuse, and that sort of stuff. Like, you have to triage this shit. And prior, people apparently didn't have a way. There was just a very generic sexual misconduct uh, reporting option or something. And yeah, no, it's changing, I guess. And apparently he also clamped down. Well, well, I keep saying he, but I assume it's obviously his team that he's, yeah, cracking his whip on. Uh, they removed a bunch of the three. This is according to Eliz Eliza Blue, a human trafficking survivor. She says, um, the three biggest hashtags used by child abusers selling child sexual abuse material on Twitter have virtually been eliminated. This is huge. So that's cool. That is cool. Finally, some good nice. news. Some, yeah, some good news. I just, I, I cannot believe that Twitter didn't have the option to specify whether your report was targeting, like it was about child sex abuse material like that seems like such a no-brainer they were just they, they, they you could prioritize it they used to not give a fuck at all like they just they didn't act on it ever it it, it was despicable they didn't yeah. and so i'm looking at the option they had previously and it was a very generic option just said shown sensitive or disturbing content consensual nudity and sexual acts non-consensual nudity unnecessary gore graphic violence symbol or image intended to spread hate based on someone's identity it's like just that they lump that in there with the like symbol or image intended to spread hate based on someone's identity i don't give a shit if it's the most racist meme you've ever seen it's not as important as like revenge porn or other shit how can you lump that in with child porn and have it all be under one umbrella it's so ridiculous yeah, this is genuinely a good change. Mm -hmm. So that's good at least. Yeah, credit where credit is due. Other than that, did I miss anything? Did he do anything else? Nah, that's really about it. He uh he did just make a tweet. This is breaking. This is uh oh. all, right on hot off the presses. Hope all judgy hall monitors stay on other platforms, please I'm begging you. <laughs> that's your latest. I I mean, I, I agree with them. I don't know if you guys keep up with the Mastodon drama. Mastodon, yeah. a platform God, allegedly made by a man who pees in diapers on purpose. He hey, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> That's the sign well, of a good social him. network. Because apparently he does it under an alias, but here's a word of uh, advice. Hide your face in photos if you're going to wear diapers and pee in them. <laughs> <laughs> Right, That's pretty good advice. You just sold me on Mastodon. I'm making an account. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, luck Kelly does love. Instance. What was it? Adult baby diaper lovers. Yeah, uh, ABDLs, <sighs> adult baby diaper lovers. Yeah, you've always been a fan of that. I went to their. Yeah, I used to have an account on their forums just to read some of their posts. Sometimes that shit was yeah, crazy. You were working up the confidence to start start uh, living your life the way you wanted it to. No, they were they were pretty persuasive. Some of the stories they'd tell and <laughs> some of their strats were pretty uh, impressive. They had a strat for how you could shit yourself while going to bed without waking up with a rash. So they used 
they used to put it baby powder on like the uh, the pant legs of the diaper and the rim of the uh, waistline so that way when you shit your pants it doesn't like rub off on those areas and make you like uh, itchy in the morning or whatever so much uh. effort it's a lifestyle why like I, th- I thought with fetishes, you, you're just, like, the goal is just to come, right? Just, <laughs> no. no. Dude, no, people engage that in this no, shit, it's, it turns no, no, life no. ruining for them. It well, consumes fetishes, their entire life. It gets fetishes, out of control. Uh, fetishes for a lot of people become lifestyles. Like, look at furries. Like, there's tons of furries where they extend it into, I wear a fursuit, or I have this, like, name that I go by that's, like, Sparkle Dog. Or, you know, I wear this gear, or please call me... They're like, it, it depends on the person, you know? Some people... Becomes when, an identity. Some people, when they shit in a diaper, the they come, and then they're like, Oh, I'm done! And then other oh, people no, they, go, what if I lived in this diaper? <laughs> no, it is absolutely not a coming thing. In fact, that was like the last thing I ever saw in those forums. It was literally just about like how I can pee and shit myself in this diaper and have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so also, just, everybody's different. Also, not sexual? It's not sexual? Oh, it, it is, is sexual. It is 100% sexual. This is only well, Charlie, something Charlie sexual. Charlie just said it's just to it's have fun. It's a sexual lifestyle. He said it's the last part. Yeah. Not just it's not, not like... It, the goal isn't always to come for them, though. Like, at least not in the community forums that I was reading back in those By days. By the way, I might split the room, but autopedophilia, the sexual attraction to yourself as a child or the idea of a baby, kind of pedophilic to me. I don't like it. I don't like the idea of like diapers being involved in sex. I've never heard of that, but yes, that is clearly pedophilic. What? Of course it is. I don't know if you necessarily split the rules. You're a a fake lurker, bro. This is referred to as auto-pedophilia. It's just pedophilia, but auto, directed at yourself. And you is that what plays a little fucking get, baby. You are so invested in hating pedophiles, you're getting like the sub-genres now. <laughs> I've never I, heard like, of this. We are on the internet for a living. What do you think I do usually? I just, I fucking read about weirdos, and it's entertaining to me. By the I, way, they call yeah, themselves yeah. littles, and they exist in something they call little space when they're role-playing. And then sometimes they exit little space, and then they're in... What do they call it? Anyway, I forget. But anyway, little space is where these fucking creeps hang out. What the fuck? Um, Charlie, if you would like to go on the instance where this man is hanging out on, it is abdl.link, but I think you need an invite, because they like to keep a tight-knit community of fellow diaper poopers. No. (laughs) That makes sense, yeah. They don't want people like me signing up anymore and just enjoying the content from afar. What was the forums I used to use? Hold on, I want to find that now. It was a big one. I want to know if it's grown. That's what I'm interested in. I haven't been there since college. Let's see. This what what was your usage of this site like? Like, how, how often did you go there? I'd go like once a week just to see what's going on and read some wacky stories. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, though. Was it the ABDL shop? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah. it's been deleted or consolida- consolidated into a different thing. Yeah, maybe like rolled up into another one. I don't remember. I, I probably wouldn't even recognize the name if I saw it. It's been so long now. Did you make any friends there? No, I didn't talk to anyone. You needed an account just to like look at the post, so I made the account. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, I also made an account on the Puppy Play forums from back in the day, too, to read stories there. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a classic Puppy yeah, Play. Yeah, that, that, one, that one was like actually a classic, though. Yeah. Those are the ones where people walk them in public and they meet like real dogs and the real dogs freak the fuck out and don't know what to do. Those are great videos. I hate that shit, There's a really popular one on Twitter at the moment. Stop taking your fetishes into public spaces. Exactly. It is so annoying and like... Like, especially when they say shit like kink should be at pride or whatever. Like, no, why? There's kids there. Fuck off with this shit. And then when they have like men on leashes walking... Not pride specifically, just furries acting the shit out in public or dressing like babies in public or in a princess costume. Like, I don't consent to this. I'm not just like a background character in the porn that you are imagining in your head, bro. I don't want to see this. You're involving me in your fetish now, and I'm very uncomfortable with this. It should not be. And it's the same thing with those like um, exhibition porn things like where a girl will flash her tits at like a walmart or something or something or she'll walk around with like a butt plug in it's the uh, exact same well, thing if she's, if she's hot she should keep doing it but no uh <laughs> it makes me so fucking annoyed to see those videos because all i'm imagining is just like 
the people it's surrounding It's still a joke that. of a uh. of an old creep going to the park and like opening his trench coat and flashing the jogging women there. You know, yeah. you're doing the exact same thing except you're wearing a fur suit. It's annoying. Yeah, just stop doing it in public. Well, the exhibitionism is part of their kink. They can't stop doing it. Well, yeah, that's I, like I get that. That's kind of a hard one to solve. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to do there. Sorry, guys. Sorry, exhibitionists. You kind of screwed. <laughs> <laughs> the bad. most oppressed sexual group, the exhibitionists. Yeah. <laughs> What's the solution? <laughs> I don't really Ban it! What do you mean? Like, well, no, you don't they, get to do this. It's so obvious. You, Have them do it with each other. Hey, or hey, that, Gary, I come guess. on over. Watch me fuck my wife, and then I'll watch you fuck yours. The end. But that's that's just that's like an orgy or cuckolding. Like, yeah, it's it's a not, no, you have that's you don't a have a relation. But, I don't care. What do you mean, but Andrew? Like part of the part of what gets the rocks off is that they're doing this to people who don't want to see it. Don't know. That's partially don't, yeah. it. Okay, so, yeah. hey, Gary, come over and fuck your wife on my kitchen counter, but do it on a day I'm not expecting it. <laughs> Break into my place. <laughs> yeah. Do it when I least expect it. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone's happy. They, they <laughs> would not <laughs> agree to that, bro. I'm telling you right now, they don't want that. That's just not naughty enough. Yeah. Because there are only naughty mothers with they their children and people shit. that... Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, see, that's, I mean, that's just when you turn to pure fantasy. I mean, it, it's like the idea where women have rape fantasies, like tons of them do, but most of them would never, ever want that. It's just fantasy. So just stay stay in your head. Develop your imagination. Yeah, stay in your head. I, this is not a difficult thing to solve. Ban it across a, a spectrum and impose heavy, heavy fines if you have sex in well, public with this degenerate shit. Well, yeah, it's not, it's not like fucking yeah, public they, they is legal, the, they you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not like you don't get fined for it. Kaya sees this everywhere he walks in Turkey. There's like six people per mile. I am not just talking about like actual penetrative sex. I'm talking about a man in a fursuit on his knees getting walked by his master. Like, you're obviously engaging in this sexual act right now. This is a kink, but you don't technically have your dick out just yet, so we can't call the cops on you. That's the part I mean. Get rid of this mm. shit. Fuck you. What about, if you don't right, get to so do it, about, then you don't get to do it. You don't have a God-given constitutional right to include other <laughs> people in your porn fetish. Okay, so possible solution. What about a... Again, this doesn't work for exhibitionism because they want to do it around people that don't know. But what about like a public kink place? Like, a, you know how there's uh, <laughs> nudist beaches and stuff like that? Okay. What about we set up a little patch a good, of land for them? That's a that's great a idea. idea. Yeah. yeah. They're just called a sex club. Yeah, I mean, do that. Well, no, but it has to be your... public. It has to be public. Like a zoo? I mean, yeah, I guess, you take, but... <laughs> well, yeah, you take, like, a beach that's, like, behind yeah. a cove or, like, down a slope, and you put a sign, and it's like, warning, this is the sex beach. If you yeah, go in here, you're new... consenting to seeing sex. Yeah, exactly. That could yeah, work I, think really I guess work. if you ban kids from it, sure. Because I yeah. know some yeah, freaks well, are going to take their kids to see it. You can easily kids are allowed to do beaches, right? Heather's on the beach. Wait, why do uh, they yeah, get the beach? Give them a fucking solution. back alley ghetto. Give the well, beach no, to the deserve, normal people. They deserve to be happy. Give them a beach. Yeah, wait, well, there's plenty of or beaches. Or we could meet in the middle and we give them a Burger King parking lot because no one goes to Burger <laughs> King anyway. <laughs> True. <laughs> but no, that defeats the purpose. No one will see them. <laughs> True. We need people to see them. <laughs> just Good give point. them a... Uh, just take them to the funhouse mirror, if you full of out, mirrors, and they can look at themselves. If you out there listening are a disgusting pervert, let us know where you would most want to congregate with other disgusting perverts. Well, it's, no, beach is good. The, why else would but nudist beaches exist? sand in your crevices. No one wants that. Why do nudist beaches exist then? Because it's like the only place nudist yeah. people, nudists are I actually, allowed. I have no idea. There's a nudist colony that I, I know is not super far from uh, the area here and I've visited that area I've never been to the nudist part but it's like one tiny like sliver of land that they're all nude on I don't get what the fucking point is <laughs> there's one to be nude bro yeah dude yeah. what do you mean but you ever been to that same solution neat. to exhibitionists like maybe they don't want to get sand on their fursuits who knows well, then, yeah, but, like, you can have the beach side of it, and then, like, a little bit back the land side where the fairies can congregate. 
Then, I just thought we throw them into fun. one giant pool. You have like the furries fucking with the exhibitionists, fucking with the pet play, fucking with the this. You just put them in a big like gloopy mass on the beach. Well, yeah, it's it, like that's what I'm saying. It's just a giant kink zone, like a fenced off kink yeah, area where kink, you have to like yeah, the kink zone. Yeah, yeah, where you have to like there's some kind of identification system where you've got to prove that you're over 18 to enter. Yeah, it's all and regulated then, by the government. And you wear colored bracelets to show what you're into. Like someone walks up, oh, pink, your exhibitionism. Oh, let's go fuck in front of those guys. Cool. It could be. It could even be like a theme park kind of like this. Yeah. This furry oh. land. That's Whoa. good. You're on to something, Jackson. That is not a park I'd want to go to. Oh, you pussy. <laughs> Well, you don't have to. No one's forcing you. It's not in public anymore, Kaya. Yeah. It's, it's quasi-public. Yeah, fair, yeah. Sure. Again, as long as it's consensual, go right on ahead. If you're not killing anybody, I don't give a shit. It just... when it's out in the streets. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Also, we'll need some kind of, like, system in place in this uh, kink land, like... Mm -hmm. to throw diapers in and shit like that so that diapers aren't just left around but that would discriminate against the people who have a dirty diaper fetish well no they don't have mm. to use the they don't have to use the bins right well they no they just would just take them like it, it, it's a homogenous or a harmonious fucking system that works together <laughs> you ecosystem have, you have yeah it's an ecosystem you have the diaper lovers who wear their diaper and then they're like uh oh gotta take a shit and then they take a shit and they hand it to the scat <laughs> fetishists who go ooh free yeah. meal and then they hand it off That's to like point, the, yeah. the, the the dirty fetishists who are That's like, here, play this. circle of life, baby. Yeah, it's an ecosystem. People could live there forever. Who are, who are the apex predators in the kink zone? Probably the vanilla sex like people the... who are disgusted, <laughs> walking around yeah, just, judging. Yeah. It's probably just the nudists, actually, just the people there just to be naked. <laughs> and they've got, now they've got to be like exposed to all the fucking freaks. <laughs> they're talking about the better days when the, you used to just come here and be naked but now there's like people yeah, wearing you... shitty diapers yeah they're like what the fuck happened to you I just wanted to look at topless chicks <laughs> yeah Apex Predators would probably be the muscle fetishists they'd be fucking ripped <laughs> just walk around beating people up well why would well, they be there yeah <laughs> they, well, they you, like you, a, you, you can just say that in public yeah, there's nothing That's inherently yeah, that's, that's not, like, true. inherent to the zone. That's true. I, I may have thought muscles were a sexual thing for a minute there. <laughs> well, I mean, I assume some can be. There are... I, I don't know if they're called bears or if they're lumped under the bear umbrella, but there definitely are, like, super gay dudes who like to get super buff. And a subculture of even that are the ones that inject their bald balls with saline. To inflate them yeah. to the size of mangoes. There was a guy who was running an actual like gay sex cult and he was making all of his followers inject saline. And one of them died, I think, from it. That's hmm. not surprising. I forget his name. Yeah. You shouldn't they put saline fucking goofy, in your balls. Dude. They looked hysterical, but... If anyone, uh, out there, saline again? if anyone out there is listening and isn't sure, don't put saline in your balls. It's not a good idea. What is, what is saline? Is that like salt water? It's ball solution. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it is just salt water, Jackson. Well, and yeah, apparently you have to, like... Very smart. Yeah, and the needle has to go into your balls, and then you have to, every once in a while, reinflate it like a car tire. But <laughs> I guess if something goes wrong, something goes wrong, because these dudes would do this at home. Yeah, don't do that. <sighs> Unless you want If you to. do do it, take photos, because it's really yeah. Well, if you're gonna funny. do it, do it in the kink zone only. Yeah, the kink zone. <laughs> Make them as big as we'll trampolines, we'll have an exhibit. I wonder how, like, how quickly the King Zone would fall into just complete anarchy. <laughs> oh, almost Everything, immediately. Yeah, probably. Well, I would like that to, I would like that experiment to happen, though, so we could get kinks off the streets. What do you mean experiment? I see business opportunity. That is a good business well, opportunity. No, business, business, businesses already exist. Like Kaya said, there are, like, kink uh, clubs and s stuff like that. Those are businesses. Then what are what we I'm doing? Is just a pub, which is a, a public space, like where they, they actually where want to they make a commune. Can't, well, yeah. Well, how are we going to pay for Fair it enough. then? Well, the government pays for it. Well, we pay for it through tax, I guess. <laughs> oh, now you've lost me. Oh boy. <laughs> It was, <laughs> you, you, you can't get the government involved in things like that. Yeah, it's too cool. They'll fuck it up. Well, who, yeah, who make it wait? Who cool. runs nude beaches currently? God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's one of the commandments. All right, let's wrap. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of The Official Podcast. Bonus episodes at patreon.com slash the official podcast. Um, yeah, lots of cool stuff over there. Another bonus episode going up this week. And we've got more content coming over there soon. So make sure to join up and see what we have in store for you all. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Feel free to rate us on iTunes and Spotify. It helps out. It's um, mm -hmm. really nice to see. That's it. Thanks, Goodbye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.